Week 5 around the Lone Star State, and district action is heating up. We're beginning to see the contenders separate from the pretenders. We have highlights of ranked teams in every classification. The DQ bus pulls into Sherryland, deep in the valley for its game of the week. And we'll show you the play of the night. High School School Board Live hits like a Mack truck next. The border battle between Deer Park and Laporte. Deer Park unbeaten, taken to the fourth quarter under two minutes to go. Terrell Bernard catches the ball. And from Austin Upshaw, three plays later, it's Bernard again scoring. And Laporte wins this defensive battle 10 to 6. Less than 12 seconds to play. What a win. And that is Deer Park's first loss of the year. And welcome to the show, Rick Renner, alongside the guy who created Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine. No, wait a minute. That was the legendary Dave Campbell. You're just the managing editor, Greg Salt and Tepper. Craig Way is on the road in Kansas with the Longhorns. We'll check in with the guru later in the show. What a night. District play in full swing. Even the two-time defending champion, Allen Eagles, were tested tonight. Yeah, nobody is safe this year. That's the one thing we've learned, is that if you play football in the state of Texas, you are going to get tested. It doesn't matter what week or what opponent you've got. We start with a huge matchup in the DF Dub. Many in the state are wondering just how good South Lake Carroll is. Well, they beat Todd Dodge's Austin Westlake, Oklahoma Power Tulsa Union, and spanked Midland Lee by 50. That's pretty good. Well, Abilene rolls into Dragon Stadium 4 0, scoring 38 points a game. Let's go to South Lake Carroll, where good guy Hal Hawasson was going for win number 200 tonight. And early on in the first, Ryan Agnew drops back in the wide open, just takes off, and he'll score at 7 0. Dragons with the lead. Then later in the first, same score, and it's Abram Smith taking the handoff, and he'll get in. That ties the game at 7 all. Then Smith again powers into the end zone despite being horse colored on the way. Ouch. Eagles tie the game at 14 with the number one team in the state. Then little Jordan Humphrey. He's pretty good, one of the best in the state. He put the Dragons up 28 21. Later in the second, more little Jordan. Dragons lead 35-21, starting to separate. And for good measure, it's South Lake Carroll's Humphrey again as the Dragons go on to win it, 63-28. Starting quarterback Ryan Agnew left the game with what we hear is a back injury. We'll know more later. The classy Hal Watson earns his 200th victory of the year, and it's a big one over the Eagles. What a win for Hal. We stay in the DFW region, and here we go. The Sippy Tau getting it, getting it started for Euless Trady against Colleyville Heritage. And uh, a big game here. Jerron Wilson with a touchdown run around the left side. This was a low-scoring affair here, but that's how Euless Trady likes to play. Trinity wins this one 14 to nothing over Heritage. How about the game between Cibolo Steel and Smithson Valley? It was a wet night at Spring Branch, and we saw the effects of things early on. Smithson Valley was leading this one in shock, and Cibolo Steel, who's only lost two regular season games in the last 41, but they would settle down. Cord given, getting it done into the end zone here for the score, and Steele would survive as they rally 31 to 20, the final there. So with that, let's take a look at the 6A top 10. The top four are Metroplex teams. Everything pretty much to form tonight, but some scares. You can make a case, though, here, Tep, the Dallas Skyline might be the best team in the state. Explain to me, though, how the Woodlands, who beat Katie, who is ranked, is not in the top 10. I can't explain it. The Woodlands has absolutely proven their mettle, but you look at this, and it's actually holding the form, which has been rare this season. Everybody is getting tested, but this week, it seems like everybody is actually surviving. Well, what is the toughest district in 5A? You could make a couple arguments in the Houston area, maybe in the Dallas area. For me, got to be District 25 5A. And there was a big one tonight to maybe take the pole position early in 25 5A. We're talking about Cedar Park and Georgetown. We take you now to the beautiful Central Texas. We pick up action with Georgetown quarterback Ben Botlinger faking the handoff, connecting on a deep throw to Javante Grimble, who's wide open. 
touchdown Georgetown. Then it's Bollinger again. This time it's tipped and intercepted by Thomas Hutchings, one of the outstanding linebackers for Cedar Park, and he is gone all the way to the house. A Cedar Park touchdown. Then more Cedar Park. This time, it's quarterback Amir Alzer. We hear so much about the defense. Here's that offense. Davis Fiala, rather, hauling it in. 31-28, Cedar Park bounces back from last week's loss. And it's, it's an awesome feeling. It's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful regardless of the situation regardless of the scoreboard you're going to be successful because you put in all the time all the effort all the hard work and you know that it's going to pay off and it that's Apollo's Hester of Georgetown Eastview after their 42-41 victory over Vandergriff, where they rallied and stuffed a two-point try to win. In case you were under a rock or living where Tepper does, that <laughs> clip has been seen on Good Morning America, Entertainment Tonight, Fox News, and Ellen. Apollo's need to be a motivational speaker. It's a working one for Eastview, who put their 4-0 record on the line. And you know what? In the end, they were up against Vista Ridge, two unbeatens, and you saw the final there as I believe Eastview won that one, right? Yeah, and it tells you all about 25-5A, how deep it is. Take that back. Vista Ridge was the winner of that one, so they escape and knock them down. The score was so quick, we missed it as we get to this one. Uh, Joe McBride and company, the magic there at Dripping Springs after upsetting Cedar Park last week. They go down to Marble Falls. And Leander losing to Vandegrift. Man, that, that, that whole district is just absolutely insane. And with that, let's bring in the czar of Texas high school football, Craig Way, who joins me on the phone. Nobody can explain the most competitive district in the state better than you, the mayor of Austin. Craig, what do you make out of what we saw tonight? From top to bottom, it's, as you guys were saying, as competitive a district as you'll find. Consider this for a moment, Rico. You had... Uh, Drooping Springs get that win, a shutout win over Cedar Park. They come back. Cedar Park at one time had been number two in the state and had been until losing that second game. They turn around, knock off third-ranked Georgetown. You had Vandegrift, which was getting votes to get into the top ten, but they lose that game to Eastview 42-41. Eastview was like 13th, just outside the top ten in the balloting. They turn around, had a late fourth-quarter lead, only to see Vista Ridge score late and get a final stop to win 35-32. Vandy does its job, Vandergriff getting a win over Leander, and then Marble Falls turns around and beats Drip 35-14. So when all that smoke clears, we're at nearing the midway mark of the season, getting to the midway mark, and it's Fisterid sitting on top of the district all by itself at 5-0 and in 25-5A. All by themselves, they are in first place. Now, there's a long, long way to go in this district, but it does illustrate how jumbled up and how crazy this ride is going to be all the way through all 10 weeks. Just more who to thunk it, but of course, uh, one of the headlines tonight, Allen tested big time by Flower Mound Marcus. They end up surviving, but what did we learn about the two-time defending champs tonight? Jeff, I think one thing that we we learned is that Allen isn't afraid to be tested. <laughs> I mean, just like on a week-in, week-out basis, we're seeing them get pushed a little bit, pushed here, pushed there. But Tom Westerberg's team bounces back. They find a way. And when they strike back, they seem to strike back with a vengeance. You know, they'll come back and hit you with two or three scores and hold on and pull away or something. We saw Geyer push them a little bit. We saw them get pushed uh, in some other games as well. So they, they've gotten their tests. They just happen to pass all of the tests to this point and quite often that's the mark of a champion or in this case a two-time defending state champion thanks brother great stuff we'll see you in the studio next week you can check out the voice of the longhorns in lawrence kansas saturday as the texas longhorns open up big 12 play on longhorn radio stations here there and everywhere let's take a break on scoreboard live coming up next it's off to h-town the golden triangle plus we'll get a mod vitals take on a great night in the greater houston area after this timeout High School Scoreboard Live is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer now for great deals during the Built Ford Tough Sales event. By DQ, the stop sign of Texas. For the best treats, eats, and drinks in Texas, stop at DQ. And by State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com to get to a better state. Okay. Your Android phones, it's all free. 
Even Tepper can afford it. <laughs> is there a better running back tandem in the state than what they got going on at Port Arthur Memorial? What a one-two punch with Baylor-bound Cameron Martin and Corey Dalphine, who is going to Texas Tech. Tonight's dynamic duo is up against the reigning district MVP, Christian Jefferson, of unbeaten Channel View. Enjoying the view in this one. It's lightning and lightning, but they got thunder on the other side. All right, we start with the stud running back, Corey Dalphine, getting it done. But, you know, there are a lot of storylines in this one, and Jalen Hurts will make them hurt. Oh, look at the run with Tremichael Tut on the curl, getting it done. And, yeah, you know, Channel View is quite the story. The Falcons are 5-0, and and keep in mind, they only had three district games that they won since 2008. What a job that Avarian Hurts has done with his crew. Big shout-out from Sean Washington and the Houston Texans on the impressive win. They take it 70-49. to Channel View is 5-0, and and they are the real deal. Meanwhile, in the Houston area, Kingwood, the 3-1 and War Eagles of Oak Ridge in town and guess what the war eagles win it 30 to 26 the final there well let's bring in the eyes the ears the face and the toes of the greater houston area ahmad vital of scout.com ahmad you were at this game did it play out how you thought it would you know you know rick i kind of came into it kind of on a neutral on a neutral slate i didn't know what to expect out of both teams i know both teams were just coming off of losses and hungry for a win and I knew that there was, a, there was a slight bit of talent on each side, so I wanted to be able to just kind of keep an open mind with it. But I can tell you right now, I, I, was, I was really impressed with definitely the second-half effort from Oak Ridge because early on it just didn't seem like a lot of things were clicking. And, you know, these guys just kind of, you know, went in the locker room, regrouped, and when it came out, it was a new attitude. There was a new mindset. Those guys came out and just was, was making plays. And, you know, Kwame Itwi was, you know, he came out and was, and was just really just delivering blows to Kingwood. But as you can see, Kingwood kept fighting back. And this team, you know, has a lot of fight despite the fact that it just looked like physically Oak Ridge was the bigger and faster team. And, you know, Kingwood had a last, the last second shot and uh, couldn't get it done on fourth down. And it seemed like Oak Ridge just made one more play than Kingwood did tonight. Now, Ahmad, you are the guru of Houston high school football. So people are used to hearing about Katy and Galena Park North Shore and the like. But it seems to me that this year, Houston area is deeper than it's been in past years. Do you agree? Yeah, you, you can say that. You can say that, Tip. Uh, it seems like for, for the most part, uh, what you have is uh, what we like to say is kind of top heavy. You know, you got, you know, you have your Manville and your Katie's, and then it's just like kind of that next tier down, and you're just like, who's going to kind of be that, you know, five, six, seven, and 18, you know, filling out a top 10 here in the Houston area. And it's a lot of teams, you know, vying for that. You know, South Fair is looking pretty good. Pearland is looking pretty good right now. And, you know, you got a lot of these other teams who's like, you know, hey, check us out too. We're, you know, we're 4-0, and we're 3-1. and You know, we're getting some things done. So I think I think this year in Houston is going to be interesting, especially that second-round playoff match because we know with them taking four teams, that first round sometimes is, uh, a bit of a joke at times, but you know, once you get to that second and third round, I think it's going to get quite interesting down here in this greater Houston area. A bit of a joke? I like that. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Hey, check out Ahmad at scout.com. He's always on the pulse of H Town. Break time on Scoreboard Live. Coming up next, it's back out to the DF Dub. Corbin Smith will chime in with his thoughts. You never know what he's thinking. Plus, recruiting with Aaron Hardigan, the Tomato Bowl, or as Tepper says, the Tomato Bowl after the break. Welcome back in to High School Scoreboard Live. Aaron Hardigan is always here with your rapid recruiting look. Tonight, we take a look at the top 10 defensive players here in the great state, a group led by none other than Mesquite Poteet linebacker Malik Jefferson, Fort Ben Marshall corner Kendall Sheffield, and Gladewater defensive tackle Dalen Mack. All three sitting in the top 50 nationally. You see three juniors in the mix. Tackles Kendall Jones of Colleen Shoemaker and Ed Oliver of Houston Westfield, as well as safety Brandon Jones of Nacogdoches. In fact, defensive tackles and safeties really own this season's top 10. It's also worth noting just four verbal commitments here, all to the SEC, three to AM, including Mac, Justin Dunning, and Ennis defensive end James Lockhart. While West Orange Stark safety Deontay Thompson plans to head to a program that's won three of the last five national titles, Alabama. For highlights, of course, of this entire defensive group, we get you back to your one stop shop each week for the them right here on High School Scoreboard Live.
Thanks, Aaron. And on that top 10 list, the amazing James Lockhart of Ennis, who's going to Texas A&M. Ennis already has two tough losses to Mansfield Timberview, who's pretty darn good, and defending state champ Denton Geyer. But you don't have to read between the Ennis Lions to know they're good. State semifinalists in 2013 and in the Tomato Bowl tonight with Jayville. Let's go to Jacksonville. Loser gets a face of tomatoes afterwards. That's what I hear. It's one of the greatest rivalries out there. First quarter, Taylor Thompson showing his moves as he cuts his way into the end zone. We move on to the second frame. Score now 23-10. Ennis on top. And it's Devin Smith to Donta Thompson. And look at that move as he... Gets the ball and takes it the other way. Ennis rolls Jacksonville 42-24. They are dangerous. Let's move on to Arlington. We take you to Arlington Martin and Arlington Lamar. And spoiler alert, this game was not close. Eric Walker connects with tight end Jess Trussell as Martin takes it in for the touchdown. Then the Martin defense steps up as Diego Grejada with the interception. And he's going to juke a man and make it into the end zone all the way. Must go faster. Must go faster. Touchdown. Martin now pouring it on, and it's quarterback Noah Buderot with the lob to Christian Levy, who is wide open in the back of the end zone as Martin goes on to win big 70, 67 to 20. Tap, great matchup of running backs between Plano West and McKinney Boyd. So So Jamambo meets Oklahoma State bound Ronald Jones. Logan Williams with the handoff to So So, and he is far from So So. And by the way, football's not even his favorite sport. He loves basketball. He's a good athlete. Then Jamambo again. He'll punch it in from one yard out. That made it 14 to nothing. Plano West. Score now 14 7. Jamambo again. Number one is in. Yeah, he got in. 4 6. And then, second quarter, it's Logan Williams. The handoff to Chamambo. You get the idea. 62 to 30. He had seven touchdowns, 242 yards, 25 carries in just two quarters. Imagine if he played the whole game. <laughs> Let's bring in Corbett Smith of Sports Day HS of the Dallas Morning News. Corbett, the largest school in the state, Allen, struggled tonight with Flower Mound Marcus, of all people. Hey, no shot at Marcus. Those kids play hard, and they're winners out there. But... Is this Allen team not as good as the two-time state champions we've seen, or is this an aberration? Absolutely not. They're not as good. They graduated so much on defense that, it, you know, last year's team was one of the best ever to play in, in the state of Texas. So they, they just had so much talent on the defensive side of the ball. And when you lose guys, uh, you know, two outside linebackers going to college, you know, three defensive backs uh, that were very talented, you, you just can't, you can't replace those types of athletes. And this year's team, you know, relies heavily on its offensive line and its star quarterback, Kyler Murray. One of its offensive linemen, Bobby Evans, suffered an ACL tear last week. He's gone, uh, done for the season. He was going to Oklahoma, so they're having to reshuffle things. You know, not to say that Allen's, you know, bad in any way. And they're the number one ranked team in the state. They've, you know, won as many games as Kyler Murray has started. But they're not the, the team that they were last year. And they're going to have to play much better. Uh, you know, Marcus did exactly what you want a team to do uh, playing Allen. They, they shortened the game. They ran the ball. Uh, you know, they rushed for... Uh, uh, a ton of yards had over 180 yards more offense than Allen. Just couldn't get it done. Uh, you know, a couple of fourth down stops for Allen. But you know, they're, they're going to be tested. Maybe not in district, but certainly in the playoffs. Corbett, you know, the other big game in the DFW area that we expected it, down in 5A, Mansfield Timberview and Lancaster. Mansfield Timberview gets the win. That looks like their biggest hurdle in uh, in district. Are they the team to beat in DFW and 5A? You know, I, you're talking about coaches in that region, in Region 2. That's a scary region for uh, teams in Division 2. And that game could have decided already the first, uh, you know, it's his actually second week of district play in 14-5A. That could have decided the district title as far as Division uh, 2 rankings 1 and 2. And that's a big deal because the runner-up in that district will likely have to face Sock. You could, in that region, have Mesquite Poteet, West Mesquite, uh, Nacogdoches, Ennis, all battling out in the Division II playoffs in Region Two, It just could be a dogfight. And so, yeah, it's a big deal to try to avoid Sock in the first round. And uh, Timberview, I've got them number one in my AP poll. And, uh, you know, they, they've been very impressive. Devin Williams, the transfer from Fort Worth Southwest, uh, has been the real deal. 
Mesquite Poteet played on Thursday night. The Ag Swag Cop Copter was there. Kevin Sumlin checking out Malik the Freak Jefferson. We hear Southern Cal people had uh, someone out there looking at him as well. Where is he in his college choices right now? He's going to take it all the way to December. He's going to, I think, mid mid December. He's going to decide uh, between a slew of teams. He hasn't really uh, narrowed down the field, uh, and then he's going to immediately enroll in that school and uh, go in early January. And it was a a great show. Uh, there for for Kevin Sumlin, everybody kind of got fascinated by the helicopter. But Jefferson didn't have a great game. Uh, their other that Texas A&M actual commit Trevor Elbert left with a shoulder injury. Uh, Jefferson left with a concussion. The, the star of that game uh, was DeAndre McNeil, who's got an offer from Alabama and has got a lot of offers. Didn't have offers from SC and uh, A&M, but he played defense and offense. Uh, three touchdowns, uh, receiving the ball, had three sacks. Or incredible performance by him. Maybe he should be getting a couple of offers from two, two other schools that aren't on his list right now. Thanks, my man. Take the Corbett Chopper home. We'll check him out at Sports Day HS on Friday nights at 11 o'clock as Corbett and David Newberry simulcast their radio show on 1310 The Ticket in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Let's take a break. Up next, the top C-Turvy Class 5A. Lufkin is rising and a top 10 showdown between Lancaster and Mansfield Timberview highlights the reaction after this. Seventh ranked John Tyler is in the White House tonight. The Wildcats averaging 49 points and 500 yards a game, but not tonight against these guys. Jackson, Action Jackson Allen gives to Vincent Dunning. That's a 15 yard touchdown, and they are well on their way. Then Giovari McAllister swing pass to Jeremy Wilson, and that made it a 25 yard touchdown score. More McAllister. He was having fun in this one to Rodney Bendy, who bends in for the touchdown. Look at that catch and get the feet down. Very impressive from 10 yards out. More McAllister, the fake handoff pass to Bryson Smith. A 48-yard touchdown as he works his way down the field. And John Tyler, impressive, 52 to 17. Look out for these guys. Let's head to the DF Dub, where Lancaster and Mansfield Timberview in a big-time district clash. Uh, first quarter, Timberview quarterback Devin Williams finds Braylon Royal with a beautiful catch, 36-yard touchdown, 7-0 Wolves. Lancaster trying to come back, and they get a little tricky with Ricky. Ricky Henderson, that is. He takes it in, 15 yards for the touchdown. Tigers up 16-13. Just before the break of halftime, 4th and 19, Wolves going for it. Williams finds Jelani oh. Selman down the left side, down to the one-yard line. Then 10 seconds left in the half, no timeouts. Williams rolls to his right and finds Larry Jones in the end zone for a touchdown. That would spark them to victory. 50-36, to 36, Timberview passes their big district test. So let's gander at the top 10 in the top seed turvy Class 5A. Alito whipped up on Joshua 68-6. to 6. So I guess those bullying charges will come back. Alito starting to catch their win back under their new coach, but we see some losses up there with Georgetown and uh, and others. Actually, Georgetown was a winner over Cedar Park tonight. Am I right on that? No. Actually, I'm wrong on that. Cedar Park. Okay, that was an earlier score I got all confused on. But we see some upsets there with three of the top ten going down. Are you surprised? No, because that's the whole deal with 5A this year. It's been absolutely crazy. Nobody is safe. And 5A is, is a place where anybody can win a title. And I really mean anybody. I don't think there's a real alpha dog in 5A. I think there's a bunch of really, really good teams, though. Earlier coverage, you talked about Cedar Park needing to win this one. This is a team that won the state title a couple of years back. And they get a big one over Georgetown, a state-ranked team undefeated coming into that one. And that was a battle to the end. Yeah, it's a big win for them. It gets them right back in the district race. You can't go 0-2 in district, especially with all due respect to Dripping Springs. That's a game you kind of chalk up as a win. When you drop that one, you got to pick up another one. That's what they did against Georgetown. But 5A, super-duper-duper duper deep. I, I think that there's 20 teams that could be ranked in the top 10, if that makes any sense. Team to watch out for? Crosby. Hashtag CC Takeover. Whoa. They are for real down in the Houston area. You heard it here first. All right, break time on Scoreboard Live. Come next. It's off to the Alamo City. Top 10 clash at Graham. And we'll get a look at one of the most exciting running backs in the state, San Diego State bound Jawan Washington after this timeout. Number five, Kennendale, looking to improve to 5-0 and with their stud running back, Jawan Washington, who is San Diego State bound. And here he is. Look at Mr. Washington using his blockers, and sometimes he doesn't even need blockers. He'll go 54 yards for the touchdown here, and just like that, 
Number 20 makes it a 7 0 lead. Then they're up 14 7. Washington again with the handoff. He's so quick, he's so strong, and looking good. Then in the second, stop me if you heard this before. Washington off the toss, makes a cut, and he gone. Washington with six of the touchdowns in the first half. They dominate 70 to 21. Let's go a little bit north where it's the Battle of the Steers. Big Spring and Graham only in Texas, man. Tobin Tannehill, he's going to run this in for a touchdown. Yes, that is uh, that is Tannehill. That is Tannehill's brother of the Miami Dolphins. He takes a shot there, looking for his mouthpiece. 21-14, Big Spring. Then 15 seconds left, Tannehill to Dee Parker, who has Graham thinking INT, refs rule, touchdown. 33-yard score with six seconds left in the half. 27-14, Big Spring at half. Scoring drought until 10 minutes left in the fourth. Graham's Landry Turner looks, looks, finds in the end zone. Touchdown. And Big Spring pulls off the 27-20 win, their first road win over an AP Top 10 team since 1986. That's when I was born. Wow, that's a long time ago. Very long time ago. <laughs> In 4A, the top 10 here, we do have West Orange start going down, but that's a good Richmond Foster team. That's a 5A over a 4A. Now, granted, I still think West Orange start is pretty special, especially defensively, but uh, Big Spring over Grimp. Big Spring's going to make a big jump. The steers are for real, and, and they're, I mean, a Big Spring over the Grand steers is what I mean. you got to imagine that Graham is going to be ranked next week. Yeah, they absolutely should be, because you look at the, you look at the way that they lost in a close game against a ranked team, they should be ranked. And I think 4A, much like 5A, is very, very deep, but they're for the taking. And I'm, I'm very interested to see who ends up kind of holding that hot potato, if you will, because somebody's going to end up getting that big road win that vaults them into uh, kind of up into that top sphere and it may end up being big spring that win tonight over graham's super impressive yeah and who by the way is doing the scheduling of graham because <laughs> it's like murderer's row they're in a top 10 clash every week all right coming up next the bill ford tough player of the week watch list and we'll head to the valley dq big game of the week remember that 109.9 yard touchdown on a missed field goal last year it's featuring sean landez's sherry land rattlers against unbeaten vela right around the corner Let's roll out the Bill Ford Tough Player of the Week watch list. These are some of the superstars we're keeping an eye on to win the honor. Highland Park has yet another Bergen. Brooks, who has eyes on taking the Scots farther than any of his brothers. But Brady has the lead, 24-2. and two. two district titles will do that. And speaking of good bloodlines, Coy Sr., quarterback the Philadelphia Eagles, Uncle Ty won the Heisman. Brett Winnigan wins a lot. He's got offers from Navy, Rice, SMU, Tulsa, UTSA. Bishop Dunn's A.D. Miller is verbally committed to the Fighting the Line Eye of Illinois. And Riders' T.J. Vasher catches pretty much everything. Nominate your favorite player at playeroftheweek.com. Hey, look out for San Antonio lead quarterback Kyle Style Fuller. Already thrown for 1,500 yards and 20 touchdowns. But this time on the ground to Mike Morgan, who gets it done. Then they force a field goal here, which barely squeaks in there and counts. And then quarterback sensation Josh Thiessen. Under pressure, forced to throw in the pick by Chris Roman and San Antonio Johnson. They go on to win it 16 to 10. Let's head west to the Permian Basin where it's Odessa Permian, Mo Magic, and Lubbock Coronado after a scoreless first quarter. Second quarter, Permian with the option game. And Potter, uh, Trey Potter will keep it. Stretches for the pylon, a yard shy. But the very next play, this is called touch. Touchdown vulturing is what this is. Hand off to Brandon Bailey up the middle. One yard touchdown run. Permian, uh, seven nothing. Then, then Potter flushed to his right, picked off by Roderick Stewart. Coronado wins this game on an, a game winning fifth four yard field goal. 15 to 14. Wow, undefeated Amarillo putting it on the line against Midland Bulldogs and Sandys. Something's got to give. Darius Reed says, read this. What a tough run. Oh my goodness. He hurts you when you get you. Bulldog quarterback Ryan Goodrum looking for the end zone, but the Sandys defense comes up with the big INT. Then Amarillo quarterback Matthew Ortega dropping back, can't find anybody, somehow avoids the sack. Whoa. How does he do this? Every guy on the field had a chance to tackle him. What a run. Amarillo would go on to win it 21-10. to 10. And you think about all the history with the Sandys. 
And they look like they're kind of turning back the clock right now. Absolutely, and they made some history tonight. They become just the second team in Class 5A, formerly 4A, to reach 750 wins. Uh, the only other team is Highland Park. That is very esteemed company. Mel Maxfield has just taken the torch of Amarillo football and moved it into the 21st century. One of the very best coaches in Texas, and they've got a heck of a squad this year. They're going to be fun to keep an eye on playoff time. Let's take a break. Coming up next, we'll check on the top two teams in Class 3A, Cisco and Franklin, plus the DQ Big Game of the Week in the Rio Grande. Choke the remote. Big 12 Live, presented by Ford every Saturday night on Fox Sports Southwest. A dangerous game for undefeated in second rank Franklin taking on the Buffalo Bison. We pick it up with Dylan Smitherman faking the draw dive here. Pitches to Morgan Brewer and he gets in there for the score. Point after touchdown, good. And they're pretty much drilling. And that's what the drill team said. <laughs> on Franklin's next possession, Morgan Brewer will take the handoff, adjust his mouthpiece, and <laughs> make the move pretty heady stuff right there. He'll go 59 yards on the touchdown run. This was all Lions. They roll 77 to nothing. And looking at Class 3A, what jumps out at you here in top 10? All the favorites advancing. Everyone can score. Cisco's got a big offense. Franklin just put up 77. Rockdale survives uh, uh, Rockdale survives Caldwell with 38 points. Look at that. 52, 62, 68 points from Malakoff. Everyone can everyone can score, and generally, everyone can score on the ground, which is kind of rare in this, in this day and age. More highlights take us down south. Let's head to the central Texas area where Waco and Maynard had a very tough, had a very tough matchup against one another, the Lions and the Mustangs, and here they come onto the field. And uh, first quarter, no score. Mainers Jonathan Gaston will change that. He oh. sees the punt, gets to the sky, gets to the sideline, and speeds into the end zone. Mustangs up seven nothing later in the first. Mainer up fourteen nothing. Jamal Collins drops back, launches, and I mean launches to Shamar Harrison, makes a great catch and plows into the end zone. Twenty one nothing. Then Mainer rolls twenty seven nothing over Waco. And how about in the College Station area? A&M consolidated off to a tough start this year, taking on Huntsville. And Tyree Merchant putting on the Jets here. Hurdles the defender. Wow. I give him a 9.9 on that dismount. He'll take it all the way to the house. And guess what? They win that barn burner 37 to 36. What about AM Consolidated? This has been a tough start this year. It has. It's been a tough start basically because the defense just hasn't come around. But getting this winning, just getting that monkey off their back and remembering what it's like to win, I think that's going to be get, uh, going to be very big for uh, for the Tigers. I think AM Consolidated is still a threat. Uh, I think maybe uh, state title was a, a little, a little uh, maybe overzealous in Dave Campbell's Texas football. But, I mean, we've seen 5A. It's wide open. Yeah, there's always a chance. I'm telling you. You're and not they right can, on every one of and them. And they can score. That's the one thing they've got is they've got a big offense. And if you, if you can't match them score for score, uh, you're up a creek. Up next, the often imitated, never duplicated DQ Big Game of the Week. Neil Beasley takes us, his act, all the way to the Rio Grande Valley. Hey, it is bright and early here in the valley, but that don't matter because they are partying here in the Vela Saber Cat. <laughs> coming out for this one and why not because these guys have been making some noise just a three-year-old school winless in year one but a perfect 4-0 this year <laughs> wait a minute but here in Sherryland, they know a thing or two about winning football games back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons nice long playoff runs in fact they're looking to do it again this year we're here to be the guy they certainly are. This game, it's only the first game of the district season, but it might be for the district title. It's the Rattlers against the Sabercats, and it's big enough to be our... D.U.B. Game of the Week! D.U.B. Game of the Week! Somewhere in Texas... Wow, the DQ Big Game of the Week has toured the state of Texas better than a Blake Sheldon song. 
Stephenville, Texarkana, El Paso, San Antonio, and now the Rio Grande Valley. All told, over 2,000 miles. That's about 10,000 stops at Dairy Queens on the way. And a ridiculous number of Bottle of Blizzard songs. This week features a 4-0 team in just the third year of existence. And another team that's coming off their first regular season loss since 2011 in a district opener. Here's a road tested. Neil Beasley and the Emmy Award winning and nominated again and again DQ Big Game of the Week. The Sherry Lynn Raps getting a hero's welcome everywhere they go these days. And why not? Plenty of venom to go around. Back-to-back -back unbeaten regular seasons as the fans kicking up their heels. Rattlers looking good again this year. And no roller coaster season going on. Just one rain soaked loss on the season. Otherwise, opponents are fit to be tied. The home of the 2012 state football champs. No chickens in football either. You may have already seen Sean Landez, star of a viral YouTube video. No, not that one. No, no, no. This video. A couple years back, Landez with the original kick six. Literally going as far as you can go for a touchdown. 109.9 yards. Looking for the same kind of magic tonight. But they believe at Vela High School as well. Just three years old, but doing everything big time. Blowing up with a perfect 4 0 record, hoping the bubble don't burst tonight. Cats are purring right along, especially on offense. At least 42 points scored in every game this year. But this game, the game, the first district contest of the season, just might be for the district title. But Sherland at home for this one. Used to be Rattler Stadium. But with Pioneer High School now sharing, longtime A.D. Richard Thompson's name now adorns the stadium. I will eat somebody! I will eat somebody! And Coach Ron Adama has weapons. Quarterback Lance Madden, 300 total yards last week, and he splits time with UTSA recruit Diego Chrysler. But Coach Michael Salinas has taken his Villa Sabercat squad from 0-10 to 5-5 to a perfect 4-0 this year. And he's got the Valley's Player of the Week. Ever Lopez, all he's done is throw for 15 touchdowns in just four weeks. But the Sabercats might need to be perfect to stay perfect tonight. Do your job for four quarters. For four quarters, you got to have each other's back. And lastly, you got to finish. You got to finish tonight. It's not going to happen in one quarter. It's not going to happen in a half. You got to put these guys away in four quarters. You got to put them away in the fourth. You've worked harder. So tonight, let's go ahead and play lo harder, longer, and play like a Sabercat. Play like a Sabercat. Are we clear? Yes, sir. First half, Sherilyn takes the kick and goes 75 yards in 10 plays, but it's fourth and one. Madden, maddening to defenses, but hold on. Penalty on the play, so they settle for a field goal. Deutsch, it's blocked, so it's still no score after a great drive. Rattlers get it right back. Madden, quick hitter to junior Seth Carter. Inside the five, sub six, 7-0 Rattlers. <laughs> Defenses stay tough after that until late second. Lopez, quick trigger to Michael Aguilas, all the way to the one. Go easy, Big Bella. Sets up an Anthony Oradondo score. It's seven all, but not for long. Just three plays later, Madden to Carter again, this time in the zone. 14-7 Sherryland, but anybody's game at the break. Offense, we got to take advantage of every possession that we have. Let's come away with points. We got to be on top of our game, man. Find ways to help out, boys. Everybody needs to be pulling in the same direction, man. It's going to take a complete effort, boys. 
Hey, whatever it takes to win, boys, are we willing to do that, man? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we willing no. to do that, man? Yes, sir. All right, here we go, boys. Everybody up. Five, one, two, three. Five, 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 Vela controls. Nine plays, 60 yards. The player of the week, Lopez, to Elijah Reyna. Nice pass. 14 all. In fact, 17 14 visitors midway through the third. But two plays after that, Rattler strike. Check it out. The new Madden game must be out. Madden 2014, his juke stick, crazy good. 67 yards. Wow. 21 17. Sherryland back on top. Still third quarter. Call Granny back into the room. She's going to want to see this. Madden to James Cole. Check it out. Oh, my cow. The sick, nasty grab. And he gone. 87 yards. That on third and 30 from their own 13-yard line. 27-17. Rattler's pulling away. Fourth quarter. Vela sinks in their saber tooth. Ten-play drive ends here. Robert Guerrera. 27-24. Just under five to play. But the Madden Cruiser puts it in cruise control. Never lets Vela see the ball again. Ball game. 27-24. Rattlers. Let it be known. The district still goes through Sherryland. Undefeated in district. We're still trying, we're still trying to play, uh, break that school record of 13 wins. We just have to get over that hump and we'll break the record and show Sherryland some powerhouse down here. We're trying to make it to the fourth round as a school. That would be school history, but... Better yet, state championship. That's our ultimate goal, ultimate goal right there. Although we came off a, a loss, a nail biter last week by one point, um, it, we, we needed that, you know, just to humble us and keep on keep us going. And thank God for, for, for the win today and thank for God for nobody getting hurt, too, too hurt. They want to do their part. They want to continue on uh, with the Sherilyn tradition. And, and uh, even, you know, the younger guys within our program, they, they look up and they look forward to being uh, Rattlers playing uh, Friday night football in Texas. Hey, it may just be the first week of district Producer Clark Rowe, photographer Jeff Irwin, I'm Neil Beasley with your DQ. Big game of the week. Go easy, big fella. That is my line. I can't believe he stole that. was pretty good, though. I, I like that. pretty good. Man, that was fun. You know, there's nothing like us going down there and doing the DQ Big Game of the Week. You know, in the early days of doing this show, back to when Craig Way was doing it out of his basement, <laughs> you know, about 25 years ago, we couldn't get anything out of the Valley. We couldn't get video. There was no way to get it. And now we get down there, and I know the fans down there, they love it, especially when they see that Fox Sports Southwest Fan Express rolling into town for the DQ Big Game of the Week. Well, with your face on it, I think that gets yeah, everybody that pretty excited. Right. But uh, Texas is a football crazy state. We all know that. You know, I think the Valley may be the most football crazy region of this football crazy state. And that's saying something. They love their teams. They sell it out every week. And uh, what you saw in that DQ Big Game of the Week, that wasn't just for the cameras. It's like that every <laughs> week. And there's a lot of new schools down there. Pioneer and some of them in Sherryland. Look out for those guys. Playoff time. Hey, next week's DQ Big Game of the Week is a good one. The Battle of Pearland. Who's got the edge here? Well, now it's a district game, but I think you got to lean towards Pearland a little more tradition but i know one thing the rig will be rocking yeah coming up next the play of the night and more highlights scoreboard live rolls on after this okay so you're officially off the clock you better have a truck that can this four dealer now for great deals during the built for tough sales event by dq the stop sign of texas for the best treats eats and drinks in texas stop at dq and by state farm Visit texas.statefarm.com to get to a better state. Let's head to the Super Syntex region. Big one between Cameron Yo and Refurio. Skydivers delivering the game ball. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Five state title games in the last four years between these two. First quarter, Bobcats on the jaw board first. Thanks to a big play. Jalen Mascaro to Tyler Castellano. And he's gone 90 yards to the house. 6-0 Refurio after a missed PAT. Second quarter, Cats add to the lead. Mascaro on the QB keeper. 15 yards for the score, 12-0 Refurio. Yo coming back, Jacob Smitherman to Aaron Sims over the middle, 12-7. But the Cats would roll on to the 27-20 victory. Uh, a nice win for Refurio. Number 10, Stratford in Bushland. Second quarter, Bushland up 7-0. But Jack McBride with the quarterback sneak here. And that will tie the game at 7. Then the ensuing kickoff. We've seen some returns tonight. How about Ethan Cannon, who muffs the pump but recovers and finds the seam and takes off? 
just how he planned it. Stratford would go on to win it 41 to 34. As we take a look at the 2A top 10 results, anything jumping out at you? Yeah, you know, uh, you see Tannehill going down to Alto and big time. That's a big win for Alto. But again, I believe that's a 3A over a 2A. Keep an eye on the Yellow Jackets, though. Uh, otherwise, holding to form. The play of the night takes us back to Kennendale, who embarrasses the Carter Cowboys with San Diego State bound running back Jawan Washington. 26 carries, 304 yards, and he had all six touchdowns in the first half alone as Washington rolls over Carter. By the way, a lot of swag tonight. Polly Parrott style in Fort Worth. <laughs> they didn't think I'd say it. We saw a lot of teams flexing their muscle tonight in district, didn't we? Yeah, we sure did. And once district season rolls around, you know things are going to get tighter. And we're seeing that right now. Uh, you know, nobody is safe once district play rolls around. And how about uh, South Lake Carroll taking care of business against uh, Abilene? Uh, you know, two teams with 15 titles between the two of them. We've never seen that with that many titles between two yeah, schools. Yeah, a lot of pedigree and a lot of offense in this one. South Lake Carroll got the stops they needed, though. You did a really nice job tonight. Thanks, man. Craig Way better worry about his job. He's Greg Tepper. Check him out at TexasFootball.com. Craig Way will be back next week. I'm Rick Renner. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your college football Saturday. Everything's big with college football. Today on Fox Sports 1, Texas.